Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode 11 of Practical Drupal Development. In this episode, we're going to be using views to create an overview page for our news articles. Now, Unlike last time we used views where we created a block, we're actually going to create a page. So we're going to have to specify some different criteria here. So let's head on up to structure views and add a new view. We need to give our view a name and I'm just going to call mine news overview. And we need to filter down all of the content that is of type article so that we're only getting our articles that we have posted. Now, last time what we did is we unchecked the create a page and we checked the create a block. We're not going to do that this time. We're actually going to create a Drupal page here. Um, we need to give it a title here and we're going to get rid of the overview off of that title so that when we land on the page, it just says news. And we are also going to get rid of the dash overview from the path. Now, the path is when you go to yoursite.com forward slash what do you want that path to be? And you can specify that in there. You can name yours whatever you would like. Now we are going to leave the display format as an unformatted list because all we want to do is simply list the content that we have. But we don't want to use the type of teaser. The teasers are actually set up through the content types manage display. And we'll use this in a future uh, tutorial here. But for now, we just want to change this over to fields so that we can select the particular fields that we would like to use on this overview. Now the items to display, we can change here if we want to. And now what this is going to do is actually just display a certain amount of items per page. And if you use the pager, it'll show 10 news articles on one page. And when you click page two, it'll show 10 more. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use a really cool module here in the upcoming tutorials called views infinite scroll. And what this is going to do is as we scroll down the page, it's actually just going to keep loading more articles, kind of like uh, when you're on Pinterest. So what we're going to do is get rid of this number altogether. Now, when there is not a number entered into this box, Drupal is going to display all of the items. So if you have 150 articles, it's going to display all 150 articles on that page if this is empty. So since we're doing that, we obviously don't need a pager, so we are going to uncheck that. Click continue and edit. So the first thing that we see when we're on this page is that the only thing that's outputting right now is the contents title. And you can see that down here in the display. And there's a couple of other fields that we want to add to this overview. So let's click add on the fields here. And let's come up here. And if you type in article, which is the content type, it will display all of the fields that you have available in article. And we are going to add the body the image and that is it. Um, we don't want to add the tags to it because they can find the tags once they've landed on the page itself. So for now, we'll just leave it that way. We are going to take the labels off of everything here and just click apply. And now when we scroll down, you'll see that our display has changed and we have the fields that we've added. Now, this is not exactly the order that we want these in. The, uh, the best order to have it in for the styling that we're going to be doing later on is to have the image on top, the title, and then the body. So in order to move these fields around, all we have to do is come up here to fields and click the little drop down arrow next to add and click rearrange. And from here we can grab these handles and just move things around a bit. And click apply. And now our image is on top, we have our title and we have our body. Um, the other thing that we need to do is we really need to fix this image because we don't want to have our image be this big when we land on the page. That can take up a lot of space. Um, so for now, what we're going to do is click on the image. And under its image style, we are going to change this just to our basic page for right now. And we will change this here in a few minutes. Um, now, there's something else that we want to do in here, and that's this link image too. 
Normally, we didn't do this for anything else that we've done, but what we want this image to do is when the user clicks on it, we want to be able to take them directly to the page where this image is found. It's just going to serve as another link to the article. So we're going to click this and just click content and click apply. Now what that's going to do is it's going to wrap our image in a link that will link over to the node containing this content. Now, linking over to the content page as of right now is kind of pointless because what we're doing is we're actually displaying all of the text that's within that article. So there's really nothing more to read, there's nothing more to see except for maybe the tags, and if we just added the tags to this display then there would be no reason really at all to go over to the content page. So let's fix that up a little bit. Let's actually trim this text back so that it only shows a teaser of what's inside that article. And in order to do that, we need to come up here to the content body, go ahead and click on that. And under the rewrite results tab, we're going to click that and expand that out. Um, and you'll see that there is an option here for trim this field to a maximum length. Go ahead and click on that. And in the maximum length box, we can enter in a maximum number of characters that we want this field to be able to display. So for us, we're going to use 250 for now. We want to make sure that the add in ellipsis is turned on so that people know that there's actually more to this article. So it'll add a dot dot dot. Now, there's also this option here to add a read more link if the output is trimmed, and I typically don't like doing this. Um, it's not really the best way to add a read more link and what it does is it adds the read more directly at the end of the ellipsis so you'll get dot 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 read more um, so we're gonna do it a little bit differently there's also one other thing in here that when you're trimming you may want to do and that is strip the HTML tags sometimes Drupal has a tendency to open up an HTML tag and if you uh, trim it back before the point of the closing tag, sometimes it can really screw up the next item in the list. So we're gonna make sure that we turn that on as well. And that will just take out all of the HTML that's found within that text block and just display it as plain text. So we'll apply that to the display and see what that does. Now you can see that our article has been trimmed back and now we have a purpose for going to the rest of the article. Um, the title by default will link over to the article, and if you want to turn that off, you can. It's under content title. And simply uncheck the link this field to original piece of content. Now that's not something we want to do because the more links that we have to a given page, the more likely that somebody is going to find themselves on that page. So as of right now, we have two links to that page, which is giving us two opportunities to get people over to the rest of our content. And now we're going to add a third. If we come up here to the fields and click add and type in link, there's something built into views called content link and underneath it will say provide a simple link to the content and that's exactly what we want to do. We just want to provide a link over to the content. Take the label off of that and then what do we want this link to say and we just want it to be read more and click apply. And by default through views this piece of text will automatically link over to this news article. So now we have three separate instances where a user has uh, the chance to link over and read the rest of our article. We've also trimmed back the text in order to kind of entice the reader into clicking and reading more. So let's save this view and close it down here and let Drupal refresh itself. Now if we come up here to our URL bar and delete this out of here and just simply type in news, that is going to take us over to our news overview page. And now you can see that we are outputting each article one right after another and it's doing exactly what we want it to do. Now there's one other thing that I want to show you and it's how exactly these are being ordered. Um,
If we come back into our view here and come under sort criteria, you'll see that it we are sorting based off of the post date of each one of these articles. Now for our news section, this is exactly what we want. Um, if we click this, we can also see that we have sort descending set, it, set up here. So what it's gonna do is it's going to place the newest article that we have written on the top. Now this is a, this is perfect for a news feed or a blog feed because that's exactly what we want. We want the newest article to be put on top and everything else to be pushed down. Now there are going to be instances where we want to use different sort criteria. And the cool thing about views is if we click add here, you can pretty much sort on every single field that you have available to you in Drupal. So you can sort based off of the contents title, which would put them in alphabetical order, either descending or ascending. If you install the date module, which we will be doing in the future, you can also sort based off of custom dates. And then there's another thing that we're going to be using, and that's the weight field. And we're gonna install the weight module later on, and we will sort based off of user selected weight so that we can pick exactly where in the order we want something to appear. So that's just the sort criteria, and that's how we got it here. Now, there is absolutely no way to get to this page at this current moment unless we come up to the URL and type in news. And that's not really good for our site because we need our site visitors to be able to find this page quick and easy. So what we're going to do is we are going to add it to the list of main navigation links. And there are two ways when you're using views to do this. I'm going to show you the first more universal way to add links to a given menu. And then we're going to cover the second one here. So if we come up here to structure, hover menus, and main menu, and main menu here is by default this menu that appears up here. So we'll go to structure, main menu, and click on that. And you can see that all we have right now is our homepage menu link. Uh, if we come up here to the top and click add link, this is where we can specify all of the criteria for this link. We can give it a title, We'll call it news. Now this title does not have to match the title of the page that it's linking over to. It can be whatever you want. So if for some reason your page that you're linking to is blog and you wanna call it news, you can actually do that. Um, for example, if your news feed is showing news and events within the feed, you can call this news slash events and maybe just call the page news and events. Um, so it gives you a little freedom and flexibility there. Now the path is where we enter in the path to the page that we're linking to. Now as long as this path is within Drupal, we do not need the qualifying URL before the page. So we don't need for my site one stop. Uh, that's just not necessary. If you're on a live server, we wouldn't need onestop.com. However, we will need all subsequent forward slashes after that. So if the page that um, the URL that we specified for our news overview page was news forward slash news for whatever reason, we would have to enter in news forward slash news without the leading forward slash. However, since ours is just forward slash news, all we need to do is enter in news here. Uh, also, you could enter in a, um, a, a node ID into this box as well. So um, we could do like nodes forward slash six, for example. And it's if you're using an actual node within a menu, and we're gonna cover all of this stuff in the menu section, but if you're going to use an actual page node, you're always better off to use the node ID because the URL aliases can change, um, but the node IDs cannot. So we're gonna use news for now. Um, we can also specify whether or not this falls underneath another menu item, but it doesn't. We just want it in our main menu, so let's click save here. And we'll close this down, and when our site refreshes, we will have the News tab linking over to this page available to us. So we can now bounce back and forth between Home and News. Um, 
And that is pretty much the standard way of adding a uh, menu item to a given menu. Now, when we're using a views page, because views, views technically aren't nodes, the views uh, pages are not nodes, so we can't directly link to a node ID, we can only link to a path. However, we can add the menu item here so that if we change the path, we don't have to go back into our menu and change that path as well. So this is just a little bit more of a dynamic way to add a menu. So if we come over here to page settings, menu, it says no menu currently. If we click on this, we can say normal menu entry. We can give it a title of news. And we want this to fall in our main menu. And notice that we don't have to specify the path to this page. Because Views already knows what that path is, we can just change the title and click Apply. Now, this is really nice because now we can change this URL and it will automatically update that location for our menu tab and we don't have to remember to go back and do that. I have done that before where you come in and you change the path to a view and you forget to change it for the menu item. And then what you end up with is a dead link on your site and no site visitor likes a dead link. So let's come back up here to structure menu, main menu. Now you can see that it did add it here, but we do not have the option to, to delete it. We can turn it off so that it doesn't appear, but we can't delete it because it's been created by views. We are going to delete the other menu item in here that we created. And now we have a dynamic link to our news page. So when our site visitor lands on the page, they can see our homepage slider. They can click to check our news feed. They can come in here and they can click on either the image, the title, or the read more button. And they can read all of our article and can jump easily right back to our news overview page. So in the upcoming tutorial, what we are going to do is we are going to add a really cool feature called views infinite scroll to this to just have this thing load as we scroll. So between now and then you may want to add a whole lot of articles to your site. I mean, at least six, I would say, between now and then. And they can be fake and they can have test content in them, but you're probably gonna want at least six in order to make sure that your infinite scroll is working properly. Now, we can, if you're building a an actual production site through this tutorial series and you only have two real articles, go ahead and add four more uh, test articles, and then you can delete them after you know that it's actually working. So if you like this video, make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and I will see you in the next episode of One Stop How To Guys Practical Drupal Development.